Hi everyone, my name is Declan McGlynn. Welcome to Friday Forum Live, Point Blank's weekly broadcast bringing you exclusive tutorials, artist interviews and industry insight every Friday live from East London. Today we are joined by Point Blank Creative Director JC Concado to give you some home mastering tips and techniques. So today we are mastering Point Blank student and producer Alexander Favre's track, Really Like You. For anyone who doesn't know, we ran a competition on our brand new community, Plugged In, with the winner getting release on our in-house record label, Point Blank Records. And we liked the track so much, we decided to master it live right here for you guys on Friday Form Live. And make sure you follow Alexandra, aka Squeerism, on SoundCloud. And if you want to learn more about mastering, head to our website at pointblanklondon.com. As usual, we are totally live, so make sure you get your questions for JC in the chat and we'll get to them throughout the broadcast. JC, welcome back to the hot seat. Thank you very much. Very hot today. It is very hot today. <laughs> How are you doing? Yeah, I'm very good, and you? Excellent. Yeah, wonderful. Good. Wonderful. So yeah, we've got this track from a, from a student, a current yes. student on a, one of our courses. Yeah, you think it just um, started in May. So yeah, and it's, it's, it's a great paying off. And it's, uh, yeah, it is a great track. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, we did a quick mastering yesterday. I mean, we're going to go through the process Again, it's, it's the process we go through in our course, in our mastering course. Mm -hmm. And I think this student is on the course, so yes. soon he will apply those techniques. Um, and this course was designed with a mastering engineer, so it's pretty much the, the process that he's using out of the box in a mastering studio and how to replicate that in the, okay. in the box. Right. You know. uh, so we can have a listen to the mastered version. So now let's have a quick listen. Yeah. Uh, I've just selected a, a, a short sample of it. So that's what we ended up doing for our mastering. And uh, I've got next to it here the unmastered version, so uh, I always like to have that as a reference. Yeah. So I'm going to take the cycle off, and uh, now it's the unmastered version. Obviously quieter, uh, but hopefully we've done more than just making it louder, louder yeah, and uh, yeah. hopefully we've addressed it. I mean, it's, it's well balanced already. It's yeah. pretty well balanced. The mix is pretty good, I've got to say. There's only one issue in the top end which okay. turns out to be quite a problem in the long run as soon as we are putting volumes and things like that. So I'll take you through the, through the process. Um, <laughs> so the, the, the first thing I tend to do, first of all, is obviously critical listening. I listen if there's any major issue. Just one thing I want to highlight uh, to anybody mastering is the front end. A lot of guys seem to be starting their project on bar one in a project. What it means is that if you look here, I'm zooming in, if we see on the clip, it's slightly clip at the beginning. Okay. So I would really advise, I mean, I don't hear it, it doesn't seem to be a problem. You could put a tiny fade, didn't feel the need for it. But um, I would really strongly advise, leave a couple of bars. There's, you know, there's no harm and you just make sure you've got everything, you're not clipping anything. So that, that, that would be my first uh, advice on this project. I didn't mean to open that window. Um, so after that, uh, one thing that you need to note is I received this mix as a 48, 48 kilohertz, right. 24 bits. So obviously, 24 bits is is, uh, is really the norm now, and you should really. And at, even if it's 16 bits, I'm going to master at 24 anyway. You just get that a little bit more in the box in terms of with your plugins, etc. So the question I always get is 48. What should you do? When should you change the, the sample rate conversion? Well, it really depends. If you're going to end up just doing an MP3 or an AAC or FLAC, you may as well keep it at 48 anyway. 44 is only the, the only restriction you have when you master for CDs, really. Right. So what I'm going to do, for me, there's two angles. If I master for DVD and I'm giving a track at 44, 40 point one, 48, and the DVD needs to be at 196, for example, when it's a Blu-ray HD, uh, I would upscale straight away before I start mastering. No. So change the project settings, yeah. So, I, and I would convert my file at 196 at, at first, before I master. However, if I'm mastering for CD and I've got something higher, I will do the sample rate conversion as the last thing before dithering. Okay. Which means I'm going to master at 48. So what I've done here is I've mastered at 48. I'm not changing it. What you need to understand is that sample rate conversion have different quality. 
uh, and depending, I'll go through that as well. I don't use logic converter. I use, I've got a program called um, Sample Manager that uses the isotope sample rate converter, which is known to be better than the logic one. For example, an isotope have really good sample rate converter. Um, if you go to a website called SRC, I think, mm -hmm. uh, you'll see all the quality of the converters from a lot of different versions. Logic 8 on the Tiger wasn't as good, and they've improved it now, 10 on the Maverick. But they all completely changed, and you'll see they all bring some artifacts, right. and the isotope seems to be one of the cleanest ones, so something to bear in mind. Cool. So the mix of a hole is really good in the sense that it wasn't squashed, there wasn't limiter, you see. I've got plenty of dynamic. Let's have a look at it. Getting about 8 dB margin, so I've got plenty to play with. Mm -hmm. um, it hasn't been squashed, you see there's a lot of peaks and stuff with dynamics. So transient, transient are still okay. there. So the only thing for me is that the, on the production level is that there's a lot of hi-hat going on. And the main hat is cool, but it, there's all those washy hats, and those are the ones that for me are causing a little bit of the yeah. problem. So I've mastered this track, so now I'm going to show you what the process, what I've gone through. So I'm going to bypass everything, everything I've used, uh, and take you through the process. The first thing I've done, so we go back normal level, it's quiet. The first thing I've done is put this uh, quick tech from Waves. There's a lot of different, there's free simulation, uh, UAD have a very good version, mm -hmm. um, Softube has a very good version. There's, there's a lot of really good version of, 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 uh, of the quick tech or tube tech or pull tech EQ. What I love about that one is, have a listen, uh, even without the EQ, if I bypass it now, there's something, I wanted the vibe EQ to kind of warm up the sound and it kind of hypes it a little bit. And that's, that's what I call it. Very nice yeah. 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 And even on the roundness, if you listen to the ba bass, yeah. just rounder. It's that really nice low, lower mood. Yeah. That, yeah. 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 yeah, it's it just it really round, it's really warmer. Uh, and what I've done with it is, okay, the bass is really low, again. It's not that, you know, it's quite subby. Uh, most of the bass line happens at 40, 50 hertz. Yeah. Some notes are even lower. Is that to do with how the sound was written in terms of what yeah. key it's in? Yeah, absolutely. So it's now it's, it's just the sound that happens with the key right. that is written. The, the, and is the, the bass sound alongside the key just happened that the bass is at, in that region. Luckily, it's got some harmonics to it. So we still hear it on small speakers here. I mean, we're on five inch speakers. I was checking it on the speakers on the, just the laptop and it still comes through. Yeah. So that, that somehow he's managed, he's managed to really do a good job at it. But I was trying to boost at 60 and 100 and I was like, you know what, actually it works better boosting at 30. Because some of the lowest notes at 40 were getting lost. And I, I'll take you through what I've done with the bass to, to get that ring back. Now, in terms of those hi-hats, there's such a wide range between 5 to 10, 12k where everything is just a little bit bristle. And that's for me, that was the challenge on this track, to not dull it too much because to get that presence, but also, also not to make it too tiring if you're in a club and listen to it in a club, you know, with a slightly not so good sound system. So what I've done is, is basically an attenuation at 5K. And we are talking here, an attenuation like on a shelf, pretty much I've brought from 5K downwards, everything down a little bit with the pull tech. And that, that's the first thing I've done. Following that, I still felt it's a little bit harsh. To deal with harshness, there's a lot of plugins you can use. I mean, you could use a, a tape simulation, for example, yeah. some sort of saturation. I mean, Ways remember, NLS works too. Yeah, yeah, NLS could work, but we're dealing with mastering, so I, I thought we don't want to be too much coloration. I'm going to yeah. try something a bit subtle, still quite transparent. And, and lately, I've just basically, I've, I've discovered this plugin from, Brain, from Brainworks, Plugin Alliance, that kind of is pretty much dedicated to that, to deal with harshness, really. Uh, and first time I tried it, and I kind of like what it does, because it can work overhaul here with the dumping. You see, you've got a, a, a valve going on, but mm -hmm. you also have the dynamics, so it reacts on what goes in dynamically. And, I, and I've used a bit of both in, in a kind of subtle way, and have a listen to what it does. See, it reacts to the hat. And I've used this setting because it seems to work great for me. 
there's a present that you can bring back, but I didn't use it and I didn't use the saturation. So I just used it on a subtle thing and it seemed to, again, help a little bit this kind of harshness in, in that yeah. territory. So that was the second stage of, of the mastering and it's already, let's uh, compare. Two little things, but yeah. they are already making an Pultec improvement. Is making a massive difference. Yeah, the difference of Pultec. I mean, sometimes, you know, I know mastering engineers saying to me that sometimes they use um, certain device in bypass mode, but just putting it through because of the circuitry. Yeah. And the Pultec wave seems to do that to me. It seems to hype the top and the bottom a little bit, but in a nice round way. Uh, so I, I, I do that trick quite, 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 quite a fair bit, actually. Mm -hmm. per personally, it's a personal thing. The next thing I've done now is I've gone. I've tried to rebalance basically a little bit the frequency. I haven't gone really, really mental in kind of like detailed EQ, but I've, I've, I've tried to rebalance a little bit the overall uh, tonal balance of, of the entire track. So I've used Brainworks for that. I'm a big fan of those Brainworks EQ, the, the, this uh, digital EQ. It, it, you know, it's your typical mastering. You've got everything in there. So I'll take you through what I've done. Uh, the first thing I've done is I've monoed the bass. Uh, above up to 70, because the bass is quite low, I didn't feel I didn't need to go higher than that. By doing that, I've brought the bass a little bit forward, a little bit more present in a nice way. Uh, instead of being serial, I think the being mono kind of focused it in the middle. And then what I've done is uh, I, I got rid of a little bit of 50 hertz here. I boosted 100 here, I rebalanced the bass a little bit by doing so. Uh, there was a resonance at about 190, which I kind of cut down a little bit. It really appeared on the lower end of the kick, but also the, the pad on the synth, and that seems to be the cre the, doing the trick for me. Um, I brought a bit of presence at 2K, because remember, I've done that cut at 5K, and I was trying to rebalance my top end now. Yeah. Uh, and the 2K making the, the clap a little bit more present in that, and di making more distinguished from the hi-hat. That seems to be doing the trick. Uh, and I did a little dip at, at 10K again because that, that, that was really causing me a bit of a problem. Uh, I've done a 40, around 40 hertz uh, low cut. And uh, I actually had quite a high cut at 40 because there was a lot of stuff about 20. And again, for anti aliasing. And I've tried to think as if I was um, mastering from the vinyl. So really getting that kind of shape, mm -hmm. if you like, uh, shaving up the top end. So that, that's what it got to us. Have a listen now. Subtle, but we're getting rebalanced again. Yeah. More presence in the middle a little bit. Uh, and again, to help with the hat, with the shimmering, um, and it's not the main hat, like I said, it's that the, during some part of the song it has this washy hat, like a, somewhere between an open hat or a, a ride, that really should be dealt with. That's the only problem in the mix, you know, for me. Maybe it wasn't the right sound, was it needed in the track, or, or it should have been EQ'd, separated a bit more from the main hat and crap. And then it would have been absolutely spot on. That was the only little thing, but causing actually quite a bit of a problem. So with DS that as well, uh, at around 7k, a bit of DSR. You can see the DSR. You see the DSR in action the, here yeah, every time it's there. In, yeah. And it just helps uh, again with the harshness of the overall track. So this EQ has done, um, I think, uh, is the, my main EQ on the track. Um, if you don't have this EQ, uh, a lot of that can be achieved. Yeah, you know, the Flux plugin that Monos, for example, mm -hmm. it's free. Um, there's a lot of free EQ and we can post, I mean, we've done this free mastering EQ and you can use some of those. Yeah. I've got to say the linear phase EQ in Logic is really good as well, so you could achieve the same kind of rebalancing. You know, here I'm talking not of IB EQ, a digital, surgical, transparent yeah. EQ to rebalance the tonal. So, I think most mastering guides tend to have a VIB EQ, your pull tech, your manlay, your valve kind of like to warm up the stuff, and then your surgical EQ, mm -hmm. you know. So that, that's kind of tr what I've tried to emulate. And I've changed the order, but I'm going to take you what I've done. Um, after that, I, I brought, I felt it needed a bit of that kind of air. So I've brought back a bit of that 20K that we don't really hear, but it's kind of like help to come that alive. And again, the Mag EQ is one of my favorites for that, but the Lofticus, the free model, which yeah. is a simulation of that, does you know, a really good job at it as well. Mm -hmm. So, and that again, not, not you're not going to hear that here, but it kind of just 
it's something you feel rather than you hear very precisely, but that, that really helps as well. So that's where we are so far, and that's how we started. Now, it's interesting that you, you've shaped all the tone before you touch any kind of volume related. Yes, I felt that for me, it's something I got from the mastering guys. You know, when, when, when I mix, I tend to sometimes use a, a compressor to shape a sound, because sometimes a compressor may attenuate the bass, mm -hmm. may tone down the top end. But when you're mastering, a couple of mastering engineers I've worked with were always saying, no, no, I tend to work on my balance before. Yeah. Really get my balance better before I start looking at dynamic. Makes um, sense. And, and that, that, that's kind of like what I've picked up really from, and, and we go through that in the, in the course in, in, in great detail. Uh, and after that, I've brought a, a linear phase EQ to do just simple cuts. I felt there was still a lot going on, so uh, I was putting the analyzer in. So let's do the analyzer here. So you see there's still a lot of top end going on here and just a little bit here, a bit of cleaning I felt needed to be done. And the linear phase for me does that really well, you know, I mean you can use any EQ for that, but I was happy to that. So now, starting to shape a little bit better. I don't want to take too much away, but it's got that kind of slightly better curve, I feel. So that's what I went with. And after that I felt, okay, EQ wise we're pretty much at a good, at a good level. Normally, Maybe as we should move the loop bracket to a different part, just so that everyone didn't get annoyed by that. Thing. Yes, we could. I mean, the reason I'm doing it here is, uh, and I think it's one of the questions on YouTube we, we've seen before we started, yeah. is I, most mastering engineers will tell you they, they, they choose a part, the loudest part. Yeah. Because as soon just, as you start... Just to go back to that question, it was YouTube user samples and whatnot who asked us about when he was mastering he would get it to the level he wanted, and then when his drums kicked in, everything got sucked away. Exactly, and, yeah. because you probably set up your compressor, your limiters, yeah. for that lower level, and when everything kicks in, the drums sucks everything in. Yeah. And, uh, so so the, the tip would be master at the loudest point. At the loudest point, yeah, yeah okay. absolutely. But you're right, I mean, let, let's get let's people not to know, let's move here. <laughs> we may have some... Obviously not speaking for myself, but... So. Yeah, fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so after that, I mean, what something I, I forgot to mention is that what I did actually before EQing, I also brought a, a, a limiter. Just because the reality of it is that you know it's going to be limited. Mm -hmm. We're looking for levels, it's club, it's the trend, and, uh, and it goes against everything I believe in, but uh, it's, you, you know you're going to have to do it at some stage. So I brought, a I, I brought, I started with an L3. Um, in, uh, in the maximizer mode instead of the multiband. As you know, I'm not a huge fan of multiband. Yes, I do. Uh, and I'm not saying, you know, it's, it's a personal thing. So I've gone with that, and you should really, guys, try those profiles. I've used the extreme analog because, again, it seemed to time to deal better with the top end. So I've used that, but there's a lot of different profiles that you can go through. Mm -hmm. And it shapes roughly how your multiband. It's a multiband inside, you just don't control the multiband. So I'm still using a multiband, but not going into yeah. the, the details of it, if you like. So I started that, so it, it would give me an idea, so straight away it's a bit louder. It gave it plus 4 dB, roughly. And that, that's a bit louder, so it gave me a good idea where, where I was. Okay, so after that, what, what I did was, like, I think it could do a bit of, of compression. I felt, although there's the dynamic and stuff, I felt it could have a little bit more punch especially in the mid, and a bit more, because the bass is so low, if we could tighten that yeah. up a little bit. Uh, I've tried a couple of compressors, I'm going to open them both. And two of my favorite ones, when it comes to mastering. I mean, sometimes I even use Fairchild and stuff like that, if I do maybe rock stuff or... But for dance, I find... I mean, I come from the kind of 90s where I used to work on big SSL, so the SSL is the classic go-to, as soon as you put it on, everything glues together. And I didn't know if it was used on the mix, so I thought, okay, let's, tr let's try it. So we're going to try that first. And, uh, let, yeah, they're all both bypass. So let's try first. I, I set up the SSL. And it kind of works, but I wasn't super convinced that what he was bringing in for me. And I was trying with the analog in, and, uh, and I wasn't, it wasn't quite doing again. I go quite subtle, you know, ratio never above four. Uh, I'm talking 1, 2 dB reduction. Yeah, uh, if we, let's bring it a bit more. Speaking a lot of the kick, that's the problem. Mm, you know, he hasn't got, not, he hasn't got a sidechain on that one. 
Uh, and on the attack, I always go slow attack, never below 30, 50 milliseconds even. If I want to retain those kind of transients. Uh, short release, not too short, otherwise you start distorting. But it wasn't quite doing what I, I needed somehow. So I went with the, the vertigo. And I don't know, it held, it, it held clearer to me. Well, the, I think the kick is more intact. It kept the kick and although the vertigo, you've got a side chain that you can use. I didn't use it somehow. I, I kept it in. So that means still the kick is triggering because I felt, actually I wanted the kick to be compressed. Mm -hmm. You know, I didn't want the kick not to be compressed. I felt it needed to be compressed. So it was just a case of finding a compressor that compressed the bass and the top end better. You could argue you could use multi band. I've tried multi band on that one, it didn't work for me, but again, I don't think I'm super good at dealing with multi band compression. I'm still learning how to set them up somehow. I don't yeah, know, yeah. it's not my thing. So I, I, I've gone with that and I've gone with the ratio of four. Very slow attack, very short release, a bit of makeup gain. And again, I'm comp you know, getting a 1 dB, 2 dB reduction, really. Don't, don't, don't go with the metering, you know, that's a VU meter, it's not super precise. But for me, that makes a huge difference straight away now. Subtle, but the, pen, the punch that it's bringing, the way it brings up the kick, the bass, the presence in the low end, really works. Uh, so I was, I, was, I decided to go with that really. And that, that, that stage I felt, okay, we're, we're, we're getting there. So what I needed to do now is bring a bit of a level. And uh, instead of bringing down this fader, I ended up using the, the BX control, the brain works again, and just pushed, pushed inside into it. Okay. Sounds great. So, sounds quite cool. Now, I've got to take you through a little bit of my chain here as well on the metering on my master. Yeah. You may have noticed, Guy, I've used all my feathers on the channel, but I keep that master, uh, all my measuring tool on the master fader. Why? It's because, first of all, I can use a reference. So I've got this reference here. I use Magic AB, I mean, it's great. You can load up to nine tracks, you can level them for each of them, you can cycle into them. So for this one, I, I got a disclosure track, which I thought was close to the kind of vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I'm not going to play that too long, copyright issue, I did it on YouTube. Um, okay, we are a bit quieter yeah. at the moment. I mean, the disclosure is super loud. Yeah. But still, it sounds great. I've got to say, Mastering Engineer with Steve, you know, has done a great job because it's still full, it doesn't feel squash yeah. to me. And I think that's a couple of semi tones up from the base. Making the difference yeah. as well, yeah. And, and the, the, the top end is much clearer because there's less hi hat yeah. going on, you know. It's just a single hi hat. Very precise around 10k with an harmonics above, you know, 5k and 10k. You see, there's this peak if you look at the metering, and that's why I keep all my metering here because one plugin that I really like is that do the Doro meter. I don't know, I'm, I'm really, I like the way I can read it in terms of seeing my RMS and my peaks. So it's one meter I always get. I've got the pass analyzer from Waves, I really like it as well. I see the DP, I see my cuts, you know, and the fact that I've got my sample Magic AB first, that means when I compare the reference into my metering, they all make sense. They all show up. So that's the reason I've got that here. Also, I'm using this uh, Brainworks, and it used to be a free plugin from this organization called Dynamic Range. Yeah. I mean, the reason is because it shows you the Dynamic Range. So I've stayed in, at the moment, I'm still in the Dynamic Range of about 7, 8 dB, which I think is still acceptable. Oh, yeah, before it's called yeah. being squashed. Uh, there's still a version, a free version on the web of this plugin, because right. it used to be a free plugin, uh, but it's not 64-bit compatible. And since when, since then, Brainworks have relicensed it, and now you can do mid-side with it. I mean, it's, it's a great little plugin. It's, 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 it's really a really cool plugin. So you see your dynamic range, so all of them show. So now that's where we are. Uh, a last plugin that I have and I use is this beta, it's free, it's a free plugin. SSL do one as well, but it's not 64 bit. It shows you the beat you're using. And at the moment, you see, I'm on the maximizer, and it's a 24 bit plugin. So although I'm 32 bit floating, the last plugin in my chain is 24, so it shows that I'm using 24 bits here. What this plugin does, more importantly, it shows you intersample clips. Mm -hmm. Intersample clips are really, really important when you start being really loud. The, it's, it's those clips that between 
sample it can clip and they start distorting when you start con doing conversion after right remember we need to convert it to 44.1 potentially for cd but also maybe mp3 or aac for a website yeah. this is when something that clips that you haven't been careful of you've got i mean it may not clip here on a normal level but if you've got intersample clip they will show after conversion okay so if you're peaking why. at like minus 0 0.5 in the conversion? You're probably 0 0.5 okay, but right. if you're 0 0.1, this right. is where the danger can happen. Uh, which is why I tend to go 0 0.3 in terms of as a safety net. Mm -hmm. I mean, different mix engineer going to have a different take on it. So that, that's pretty much where I was. After that, I thought, you know what, I need to, do we have time to carry on or shall we yeah, do yeah, some questions? Yeah, yeah, we question? got time, yeah. Uh, There's uh, loads of questions coming in, so uh, keep uh, them coming. Uh, uh, after that, I felt I want to try a different compressor. I still feel it's a bit squashed. And on top of it, I can't really push it. The reason I can't push it, and there's something about the waves. I, 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 and I'm, I, I love waves, you know, uh, limiters and, and, and plug-in in general. And I find they work great on, on, on rock music and lots of stuff. I mean, I, I really like them. And all, but there's one thing is they don't deal super well with bass, extreme low bass. This track has extreme low bass that we wanted. I mean, I could have turned it down a little bit, but because I would have lost some of the notes, I wanted to retain it, because otherwise you're losing just some of the notes. You know, the bass line goes from 35 hertz to 55, and I'm like, well, we need to hear the 35 as well, otherwise there's a big drop in energy in club. So I thought, let's try another plugin. And I literally never used that one before. I literally took a demo of it yesterday. Uh, and looked quickly at a tutorial, like we do. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, let me try what, 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 what happened with that. So it's a mid-side, it's Brainworks, it's a mid-side. And again, I thought, you know what, I'm not going to use it at mid-side, I, I, I want to try to keep it simple. But what it does is basically, I'm going to show you how it works. So uh, I've, I've brought it in and now see, so I'm going to play it really loud now with this limiter on. And let's check out the limiter now. That. That's pretty good now. What are you, minus nine? Yeah, nine. yeah, we're getting uh, quite, a, quite a nice RMS. That I think goes pretty much with commercial track now. Yeah. So I'm managing to achieve a little bit louder. Let's compare. But more importantly, I think it retains a lot more of the transient, the punch, and uh, it deals better with the bass and therefore the, the, the top end. Absolutely. You know, in my opinion, it's a lot, it becomes a lot clearer. Yes. Everything is rounder, better. So the way quickly it works on this one is the way you do it is, obviously, I, without it, I was still a bit short in terms of level. There was a lot of margin if we look at the, the peak. You know, there's still seven, a few dBs. So I started to go in there, the way you, you do it is you start boosting the input until you reach kind of zero, and just before it starts limiting the mid. So you start pushing your input. Uh, you set up your master heart, that's your master final threshold, so m zero minus three, and then I started entering some gain boost. So I'm entering the gain boost here about two, four, and you see how it's kicking, mostly it's limiting the mid, the, mid, the high mid. Mm -hmm. I've also s set the cross, oh, system of a load, sorry. <laughs> uh, the loop, he got fed up with the loop. Yeah. <laughs> um, and um, I've set up the, the threshold at about 100 hertz, just above the base. So that means here it deals with the base, here it deals with the mid, above that, and oh, that okay. mid with the side. Right. That's what I've done. Uh, I didn't mono the bass here. You can mono the bass here. I didn't because I had already done it mm -hmm. previously. Uh, so, and here you've got the XL. It's kind of a saturation type of thing. Uh, it can make it louder. So let, let's have a listen. Oh. 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 It's all worked. Oh. It's too hot. Too hot. It gets really hot now. But yeah. Yeah, why is it starting doing that now? Um, what are you knowing? Maybe turn off the metering. Yeah, maybe. So you see, I've gained a little bit with this Excel. Yeah. 
get a little bit more again. Uh, except that I felt maybe it was again bringing a bit of the problem that we had with the top end. So I thought, no need for it. So that's the basic of it. And here you set up after that your threshold. And again, I've done it on the master, not on individually. And the threshold is how much you're limiting. You know, you see the levels here, so you bring down your threshold until you start limiting. And that's just the general rule, bring it down to your seven minutes. Okay? Yeah, for that. So you first gain, so I'm bringing the gain in. So I'm getting a bit of reduction here. The reduction is not that much, that's why it's quite, it doesn't sound too squashed. If you're looking here, we're getting well, you know. So that's pretty much uh, the process of a whole mastering, and I think it's relatively close to what people would do in a, in a mastering studio. Nice one. So there's plenty of questions. Um, we'll try and get through as many as we can. Uh, of course, samples and whatnot we asked already throughout the broadcast. Um, K1B09 is a catchy name. JC is a genius. No. That's, that's it. That's <laughs> it. No. My question is, what can I do when I want to master a track and the guy made the whole project with the limiter and compressor on it? So if I turn them off, everything goes to peak. So he's ah. uh, yeah. yeah, well, I mean, turn the, put a gain, start putting a gain down. So put a gain plug in bef at the first ah, that, that, I mean, that, that, I'm not sure the question. I mean, if the question is that he's put a limiter on when and he, he sends the project when yeah. he was mixing, yeah. uh, turn a gain and, and take off the limiter. Yeah. Uh, if it's been given to you that way, then uh, there's not much you can do. Mm. I mean, after that, you can try some sort of a... If you've been given the, the actual stem that way, yeah, there's not much, you, there's can not do, much yeah. you can do. I mean, after that, there are some compress compression techniques that you can use uh, when you're going to upward and downward compression. And, you know, upward compression is to try to bring back a bit of dynamic. Yeah. We go into the course about using that as well. It's kind of yeah. inverting compression. But to be honest, you hear, you hear it very quickly. That's the problem. Okay, you cool. know, it starts to sound unnatural. So ideally, go back to them and say, send it without the processing. Yeah. That's the best way. Uh, Anu Mora Music is asking, recommended RMS levels for different genres? It's a very, very uh, contentious uh, yeah, subject. Yeah. Uh, everything seems Don't to be... Don't be too controversial. Everything seems to be super loud nowadays. Yeah. Even some singer-songwriting stuff. Yeah, totally. You know, and, uh, and the less that's there, the further you can push it yeah, as well. So yeah. if it is a singer-songwriter, voice and guitar... You can push it you can really loud because there's actually hard, not much, yeah. that's not much bass. Yeah. So you can push it without being too affected. Yeah. Uh, I mean, normally we are talking what? Probably nine, eight, mm. roughly nine. Personally, I go for nine. Nine yeah. IMS, roughly. I mean, you know, two things to bear in mind. Your IMS level, but also the dynamic range. And that's why those meterings, like uh, this one, for example, is really important. And a lot of the brain work stuff has yeah, dynamic. Totally. Because as long as you've got a, if you go with an IMS at nine or even eight, but that you still get those kind of, 8 dB of dynamic range, that means you're not squashing it. Mm. The problem I find I hear is when you're going 3 dB dynamic range, that's suddenly you're like, there's not much between the loudest and the lowest level. That's when problems seem to happen. I mentioned this disclosure track is super loud, and it still has 7, 8 dB dynamic range. That's why it doesn't sound crushed and squashed. So yeah. I think that, that that's, uh, the dynamic range is probably as important if not more, actually. Cool. Um, I actually, Carl Nev is asking, what preferably low-budget outboard gear would you recommend for a home mastering setup? Um, the problem with mastering is so expensive, isn't it? Yeah, Generally. and also the problem with the low-budget hardware gear is that the quality is not quite there often. You know, if would you, you be better investing in a plug-in suite yeah. in the same product? I, I, I yeah. think so. I'm, 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 I'm now, I think we've gone to a level now where you know, I haven't gone into the UAD today, for example. I'm still a big fan of UAD, and at home I use UAD. I didn't just because I know less people are using them, maybe, or because the card and the price of it. So I thought, let's get with something that, you know, people are more likely to, to be able to. I mean, the ways at the moment, Brainworks, they do lots of offers at the moment. We're getting into the summer. It's the yeah. good time to go out yeah. to guys and, and buy some plugins because you get some really cheap deals, you know. Uh, I, I would advise going with that, really. Yeah. Um, I can't actually find the name of the question, but I've seen it in there somewhere in the madness. Uh, someone asked, would you, is there any reason not to master as you mix when, so within the project, as in yes. get it up to Yes, for me, there's, the a, there's, there's, there's a reason, because you should aim to get your mix as good as possible. 
I mean, ultimately, any mix engineer aims to get a mix to the point where it doesn't need to be mastered. You right. know, I think it happened to me twice where you go to a mastering room and they say, no, there's nothing to do. And you're like, yeah, jump down. Yeah, <laughs> you know, retire. You, you know <laughs> what I mean? So you, you should really aim for that. And then, because ultimately, especially when you are in, in, in limited condition, you know, I mean, you work at, from home, so you don't have the ultimate monitoring system. Therefore, um, aim for the best, and then you know you're going to need to do some fixing at the mastering. Or not some fixing, enhancing, I'd rather. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know, if, it's, if you need to do some fixing, then go back to your mix and, yeah. and, and improve it. I'll try and get as many questions in because they, they keep coming. But uh, Luke Haley's asking, what frequencies should I be looking out for that could muddy up my mix? Uh, the, 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 I mean, too much bass, too much sub bass will yeah. mask, but also the low mid, you know, the low mid around 250. There are certain key areas, 300, 500 can muddy a mix if there's too much of it. But at the same time, if you start cutting too much of it, you can lose weight. So it's being quite, quite yeah. clinical. And I think a lot of that comes from your room as well your monitoring setup. Yeah, absolutely. If you're not monitoring yeah. properly, yeah. there's going to be mud you're not hearing or there's mud you are hearing that isn't there. Yeah, absolutely. So. And it could be the mud come from the room itself or yeah. what you said. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, and uh, finally, I mean, Brandon Connor, because we are out of time. Um, besides usual tools, EQ and compression, etc., what other things can we do to add extra spice to a track to bring something new to a mix? I I mean, I, at the mastering stage, I, I really feel that mastering should be just a, a little tweaking and enhancing and, and subtle. So do it at your mix. And yes, I mean, obviously, harmonic distortion is the bigger thing where I think you can bring a bit of character, a bit of vibe, uh, you know, try to drive certain things, be a bit bold and make some mm. interesting decision and, and get some interesting stuff. But I, I, I personally, I'm all for doing that at the mix, not at the mastering. The mastering, ideally, what I want to do is rebalance a little bit stuff that I missed out on and start comparing it to a, a commercial CD and make it at that. Mm -hmm. Which is what we did today. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, nice one. So we are out of time, unfortunately. All you guys who have more questions, <laughs> make sure you head over to our brand new social network plugged in where JC will be spending some time answering your questions there. And you can visit it at community.pointblanklondon.com. And if you want to get more into mastering, music production, and all that good stuff, make sure you check out our courses at pointblanklondon.com. We'll be back next week with another FFL, so we'll see you then.